Hello everyone, I'm Mark and welcome to Time with the Durbins. Today's video is going to cover the replacement of the bushings and shocks on the rear of a golf cart. I've already replaced the front bushings and shocks on the golf cart, so let's get started. I'm not sure how the lighting's going to be here. I'm inside my building um, and I'll, I'll give you a tour of the building in another video also. Uh, but this is the golf cart. It's it's a club car. You can see it has aftermarket wheels and tires on it. It's got a raised suspension on it underneath. And looking at it straight on, the, the tire is standing pretty straight up and down now since I replaced the bushings. Before they, they were leaning out like, like there was something wrong with the suspension and I had a lot of play in the steering and everything. And um, I just didn't really look at that close until last weekend to really see what was wrong with it. And that's when I discovered the bushings underneath and the suspension were all wore out and, and mostly missing. It was rubbing right on the steel sleeve that would have been inside the uh, rubber bushing. And I had uh, there was five spots on each side that have a bushing in it. There's a spot here that has a, a bushing through the leaf spring. And then there's a steel sleeve that goes inside the bushing. And then up here, there's the same thing, a steel sleeve with rubber bushing inside of it. And then on the other end of this swing arm, there's two spots like this that each have bushings and sleeves in them. And again, I, I used the old sleeves over again because they weren't worn into the old sleeves yet. And then uh, machined my Delron to, to fit on the sleeves and fit inside the housings and the leaf spring to take up all the play. And then front to back, I had issue with extra play, so I added washers on the front and the back uh, in all five places on both sides. And then you can see the shock right here, and it is not, um, it's worn out, it needs to be replaced. So it's a very simple change on the front. There's, there's a nut on each end like this and a stud sticking out, you slip it off each end, you just got a eyelet on each end, you slip it off, put the new one on. The rear's different, it's got studs coming out each end and you you know you unbolt them slide them out put them in put the nuts back on the studs so i'll show you that now these these are the new parts for the cart this is the rear shock you can see there's a stud on each end and then rubber bushings on each end that go into the the little tab sticking out top and bottom and they just bolt in place this is the front shock you can see the eyelet on each end they'll be they'll be lined up with each other when they're on the golf cart when they when they build them they don't have to be in line because you can you can twist them kind of like this one and make them line up see they're both the same and then these are the bushing kits that i bought comes with the sleeves and the bushings and because this has the aftermarket wheels and tires on it um, there's there's a like a shackle on the back of these to raise the back up a little bit. So I've actually got, on each side, I've got three sets of spring uh, sleeves and bushings to replace. Again, you know, it's pretty easy. It's all unbolt, jack it up, unbolt it, you know, knock the old stuff out, put the new stuff in, and put it back together. So let's get started. Okay, as you can probably see, I'm not on the same side of the golf cart as I was uh, just a moment ago. When I started on the left side, I soon discovered I had a major issue with removing one of the bolts due to the body of the golf cart. Uh, so that's why I went ahead and did the left side and figured it out so I didn't waste a bunch of your time and my time trying to videotape everything. Uh, and I'll show you on the right side here the, the issues I ran into. But I'll show you the left side now that I've replaced everything. You can see how tight it is. There's no wiggle there at all. I replaced the bushings here, the bushings there, and the bushings in the front of the spring. And I also put the new shock in it. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the right side. I'm going to show you the issue I ran into. The bottom bolts on the front and the rear are no problem. You can see they're, they're completely exposed on both sides. You can get to them. But if you look up here on the spring shackle up here, the bolt comes in from this side and the nuts on this side and I have to take the bolt completely out because the rubber washer has a shoulder on it that has to, the bolt machine has to come in from this side. And as you can see, 
it hits against the body here. You physically can't get the bolt out. Uh, my concern was I was going to have to unbolt the body and completely take it off to get to this. And then I tried a cheap trick and it actually worked. Thank God this isn't fiberglass or it never would have worked. But I, I, I'll show you here in a second. I actually put a pry bar underneath this frame rail here and pry this center up to where the bolt will come out. And again, I was very fortunate it's fiber or plastic and not fiberglass. And luckily, it's a very flexible plastic. So let's get started. Okay, I'll do the bottom bolt first. It's a 9 16 bolt and nut. And it's got an elastic stop nut or a locking nut, whatever you want to call it. I always call it elastic stop nut because it's got a nylon insert in that that actually uh, squeezes down all the threads as you tighten the nut in to make it a locking nut so it won't back out so easy. So I'll take it out first. And I said at the beginning of the video, when I started on this, that all fasteners are 9 16 And that's true of everything I'm taking off. Unfortunately, the new shocks are made somewhere else, and I, I thought they would be a metric nut, and it's actually a 5 8 nut on the new shocks I'm putting on. So you're still able to use standard wrenches on everything. Um, it, it just, when you go to put the new shock on, at least the set that I purchased has 5 8 fasteners on it. The old shocks, as you can see, um, have a single nut on them, which that's the way most automobile shocks are too when they, they mount this way. It just has a single nut and when you tighten the nut down, squeeze the rubber down, that kind of locks the nut so it can't back off. It keeps enough pressure on the nut so it won't back off. Um, the new shocks I'm getting or putting on, you'll notice it'll have a nut and then a locking nut, which a lot of times your locking nut, is they call it a thin nut, it's, it's not as thick as a normal nut because it's just locking it on. It's not actually have to hold anything, it's just keeping the nut from backing off. I don't really feel like it's necessary for shocks, but since they sent them, I'm putting them on. As you can see over here on the other side, you can see the, uh, the two nuts on the bottom there, same way on the top of the shock, so. Okay, now comes the fun part, getting this one out. <laughs> so basically you get a, finder on the camera I'm gonna have to figure out how to use this thing we just purchased this GoPro it's a Hero 6 and I'm still learning how to operate it so you have to bear with me a little bit if, if I'm not getting everything in the shot you can't see everything again you can kind of see where I'm putting those up here to break this loose and once you get the the nut backed off where the nylon is no longer on the thread you can just take it off by hand but it normally it'll, it'll stay kind of tight. You need to use a socket or a wrench to get it off until you get past that nylon insert on the, on the nut. And that's, that's normal. And you can also see the spring shackles are offset towards the center of the vehicle on both sides. Uh, the spring placement on the axle is narrower than what the frame of the cart is, so they had to compensate for that. Okay. Okay, and this is, uh, <laughs> don't try this at home, folks, because I can't guarantee this won't crack, but I'm willing to take a chance because I don't want to have to unbolt that whole body and lift the whole body off. It said it's pretty flexible plastic, so... I'm going to take a chance that it doesn't break on me. There, success.
Okay, again on this lower one, the bushings just slip right in. The upper one I had a little bit more of an issue because there was some of the old bushing kind of stuck in the hole and you kind of see it flaking out there and it just turned to dust. And it was a little hard to get it all cleaned out, but I finally got them in. The outside's not too bad. The inside, again, I got to kind of pry around on this plastic to get the bushing up in there. And then uh, on the other side, I actually had to take the pry bar and work the bushing in like that. So, lucky the plastic is tough enough to be able to pry against it and push the bushing in, but it's flexible enough that I can lift it up out of the way to get the bolt in and out, or this could have turned into a really major project more than what I would have been happy doing at this time. And then you can just push those in. And I just use some pliers to get them in the rest of the way because they start getting kind of tight when you get close because of the friction of the rubber. And the same way up here. And I probably could put WD-40 on those to make them slide in just a little bit easier, but it's like putting them dry because that's really the way they're designed to go. There. Okay, so now it's just a matter of putting them back together the opposite way I took it apart. So, first thing I do is get my pry bar back in there. And then I want to be able to get that started like that. Oops. <laughs> that didn't work. Sorry about that. easier than the other side. I guess I'm getting better the more than I do. hope it is the last one I do for a long time. And I didn't know if you noticed on the floor I had a, uh, basically it's just a moving blanket. I have a creeper that I use sometimes, but I've found a lot of times a moving blanket works better because, uh, especially on lower vehicles, you can get under them easier. And I don't know about you, but I never could get a creeper to go the direction I wanted it to go. So I kind of like uh, using the moving blankets. They're, they're more comfortable than just laying flat on the floor. They give you a little bit of padding and uh, you can throw it underneath the vehicle and it'll cover a pretty big area and you can just move around on it. I've actually been underneath a vehicle working and, and wiggled my, my body enough to where I could move the blanket to another area and just keep working. I didn't have to get out, reposition the blanket and put it back under, and climb back under again to work. So, makes it handy sometimes. I, I work on a lot of Corvettes and anybody knows Corvettes sit pretty low to the ground. And I still have to jack the car up, but it's still easier using a moving blanket than using a creeper for me anyway. Okay, that's the front end. Now the back end, I'll see if I can get a good shot of this. If you can see it there. It's also got a brake cable zip tied to that same bolt, so I'm going to have to um, just put a new zip tie on and we'll get all done.
now I'm going to jack the cart up to get the spring to come out so I can get the bushing back in it and lower it back down into position. bushings should just slip in but one of the ones on the other side I had to take a rubber hammer and tap it in it was just a little bit snug but it, it went in fine luckily for me the previous owner didn't use this cart a whole lot he probably hasn't hadn't driven it in the last couple of years actually I think because uh, when I purchased it from him uh, he'd let the batteries go dry and I had to replace the batteries. down a little bit so we can get the bolt back in it. And the back end kind of went back a little bit. So I've got to kind of pull it forward and then put the bolt back in. And let it down just a little bit more. For some reason, it's not line up as quite as good or as easy as the other side did. So I'm going to have to use an awl to hold it down in place to get it lined up to get the bolt started in it. Doesn't fit, get a bigger hammer. And we'll snug those down a little bit. And that's that. Now all we have to do is change the shock out. Good, this is going to show up because you can't see the top bolt at all the top nut but uh, again they're identical so basically just hold on to the shock body and back it off and then once you get the pressure off it from the rubber it should just come right off now 
a lot of automobiles because normally they're on the car for so long they'll be rusty and hard to get to and depending on if it's by that by the engine it could have grease and goo all over it i mean i've had some that i had a real problem trying to get them off and actually had to put taking clamp like vice grips to the shaft or uh, a pipe wrench to the body of the shock to hold it while i'm trying to back the nut off because they're so uh stuck on there but luckily most times once you get it broke loose they'll, they'll come off without too much problem and this golf cart is extremely clean for being in 2008. i said this gentleman took very good care of his equipment and uh you know he, he didn't use this one very much so but i, I purchased some other equipment for him. i'll show you in another video some lawn equipment a tractor trailer things like that and all of it he, he took very good care of which is fortunate for me <laughs> okay and you can just push it up like that knock that off this will drop out get that piece out you can see the bracket here and there's another one up here just looks kind of like this only it's aluminum it's part of the frame and basically you just do the same thing in reverse to put the new shock on and i was showing you there's a thin nut here that is considered a locking nut and you can see the difference in thickness i'll get this over and off and i'll show you This is a standard 3 8 fine nut, and then this is the lock nut and the thin nut. You can see the difference in the thickness. It's not much, but it's, it's enough. I, I'm assuming maybe they do it for cost, since you don't need a full nut, or for space, maybe if there's not enough room to have a full nut onto something and lock it down. And then there's times I've used thin nuts in place of a regular nut because a clearance problem or access to it, you know, you couldn't get a the full size nut on so you want to you want to take everything off leave the washer and the nut or the washer and the rubber bushing on the inside of the shock and you see i remember the shaft part goes up so you you know if you're not sure pull it apart make sure the body of the shock is down the shaft is up that's the way they're designed to operate and then what i'm doing is i'm letting this rest here because if i put it down the hole it'll come out of that top hole and I've got to hold it apart while I get the nut and, and bushing on the top half. So I leave it like that so it kind of helps hold it up in the hole until I get, get the top nut on. And then I'll, I'll drop it over in this hole and drop it down and put the bottom nut and washer on. That was the old rubber bushing was still laying up there. Make sure I grab the right nut. then you can you can spin the shock and hold the nut in place it's a little bit easier at least to get it started just once it gets a little pressure on it the uh the shaft will start spinning in the shock up on the upper one so you won't be able to tighten it down like that but you can at least get it get it close okay so that's that on the top one and then what i want to do My bottom washer fell off. Uh, grab the right one here. Don't want to put the old one back on. Okay. And then, like I said, what you can do is just pull down on the shock now into the hole. And I've got that upside down, don't I? Got to pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, let's try this again. You want to pull that down into the hole. And then you can take and put your bottom bushing and washer on and then again make sure you grab the the correct nut and just tighten it down and like i said that's a 5 8 It's a 5 8 nut. 
where the old one was 9 16th. And then you can just tighten it down until, I think these are actually bottoming out on the threads, but you can kind of tell it's starting to get pressure on the, on the rubber because you want to squeeze that rubber down so, so that it doesn't bounce around in here when you're going down the road, but it's still got to be able to flex because as this goes up and down, you know, basically you're, you're, you're changing the location of the axle in relationship to the shock. And if it doesn't have room to pivot, you know, it could bend or break something or tear up the shock. So you just snug that down and you can see how it compressed the rubber a little bit, but it didn't squish it all the way out. So that one's ready on the bottom. And then you can take the nut and since the bottom the bottom nut can't go anywhere i can just tighten it down with a single wrench and and lock it on there now if, if um, this was just like a bolt going through something and you try to tighten that down without putting a, a wrench on that nut and then tighten this nut down against it the whole thing's going to start spinning so you want to want to hold that nut to keep from turning when you tighten this down but like i said the way this is set up i can do that without uh, having it spin Okay, and it's just basically the same thing up on the top. There's not a whole room, a lot of room to get up there. And the bad thing with these wrenches, if you bump it, it changes your direction of, of tightening or loosening and I, there's a cable up there that that hits against and every once in a while it'll change my direction and I have to take it off and switch it. These ratchet wrenches are really handy if you don't have any. I'd recommend getting some. I use mine all the time. I have a set of standard metric, straight and, and curved. And, uh, they come in handy a lot of times where you can't get in with a, a socket, but you got something that's going to take a lot of cranking. And if you do it with just a regular open inner box and wrench, you got to turn it at eighth turn, lift it off, pull it back, and turn, put it on, turn it. And these, these just, like you can see, I don't have much stroke there, but it's going right down. Lock nut on and we're done. Should do it. And you always want to put a jack stand under something anytime you jack it up. I didn't do it on this because I really didn't have room and I didn't jack it up that high. And I always had one side still supporting it. So even if the jack would have failed, it couldn't have fallen down far enough to, to trim, you know, trap me or pin me or anything. So that's. Uh, I think that's about it for today and I appreciate you watching my videos and uh, hit subscribe, hit the like button and uh, share it with a friend. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.